Mercury retrograde in the signs of Gemini and in Taurus. This is symbolic of us taking our ideas and rooting them and grounding them into something practical, creating something real. Insight that sparks our interest, that ignites a fire under us, that creates some sort of passion or excitement around what the potentials are, what the possibilities might be. Hi everyone, Heather here with Astrology with Heather.com and I am back with another super exciting extended three week forecast. This one is for May 10th all the way through June 3rd, the entire Mercury retrograde in the signs of Gemini and in Taurus. And this retrograde is a powerful one. It's starting out in a way that is going to be feeling um, rather pleasant in a lot of ways and it's ending in a way at the start of June that's going to feel a little less pleasant, a little bit more intense. <laughs> and so um, basically, as we go through the year in 2022, all of the Mercury retrogrades are retrograding from the air signs back into the earth signs. And so this is symbolic of us taking our ideas and rooting them and grounding them into something practical, creating something real from those ideas, from those communications, from those insights that might have otherwise been fleeting. And so this is no exception to this, especially because Mercury is strong in its home sign of Gemini. It's going to be a little less retrograde feeling at first until it moves into the sign of Taurus, which will actually occur on um, May 22nd. And so from that initial period, that first 12 days, May 10th through the 22nd, even though Mercury's in retrograde, this is gonna be a period where um, introspectively, our minds are gonna feel very sharp, very on point, especially because Mercury will be going into a really nice sextile with Jupiter right at the onset, because Jupiter moves into the sign of Aries on the same day Day that Mercury stations to go retrograde, retrograde in Gemini within orb of that sextile. And for those of you who haven't already done so, make sure you check out my video floating around somewhere up here about the uh, Jupiter um, transit through the sign of Aries. <laughs> This is a transit that's lasting for an entire year. It's super powerful, super impactful, and you're not gonna wanna miss this extended special forecast that I've done for you guys today, explain, explaining all about how Jupiter is gonna be expanding on our optimism, our motivation, our courage, and even bringing us through a little bit of a healing um, as it comes into the conjunction with Chiron in 2023. But kind of getting into what's going on right now, Mercury is actually going to be the first activator of that Jupiter transit through the sign of Aries. And Jupiter will also be coming into a conjunction with Mars as well, which we talk about in that video. But this is really the first exact aspect, the first activation that we'll be having. And that's going to come exact very quickly on May 19th, but it's already a major influence as Mercury is slowing down to station on May 10th. And as I mentioned before, this is where we can take our thoughts and our ideas and ground them into something practical. In particular with this retrograde, because Mercury is strong in Gemini, Mercury is trining Jupiter, Jupiter is very enthusiastic in the sign of Aries. This is a time where we might have some very optimistic, very, um, very, um, almost like emotionally charged, like visceral energy around some sort of idea, some sort of um, energy, some sort of insight that sparks our interest, that ignites a fire under us, that creates some sort of passion or excitement around what the potentials are, what the possibilities might be. And this is a time where we can sit with it, right? Reflect on it while Mercury's slowing down, while Mercury's stationing, while Mercury's not really doing a whole lot, and it starts to move backward into retro grade. This is where we're going to revisit this idea time and time again, over and over. And this could be even ideas that came up over the past couple of weeks during Mercury's shadow period. But really, this is about seeing something, taking something that kind of came to us either through brainstorming or communication or through some information that we acquired or even through our own sort of downloads or insights or um, again, our ideas. That's a very Gemini thing 
and um, we can take it and you know start to build an excitement around it and start to see from a bird's eye perspective what the actual potential is for that idea for that insight for that information that we've gathered maybe you uh, are taking a course and you learn something new and you're like hey I might want to apply this in a different way I might want to use this maybe you learned about something that you didn't even know was a thing <laughs> just in passing and it's kind of been sitting with you and it's been coming up again and again Again, and you've been kind of um, almost fixated on it. Now's the time to revisit that, to think about it, to let it marinate, because this could turn into something much more important, especially as we come into June and into July moving forward. Um, kind of going into what's going to be happening later on in the retrograde, the um, the retrograde is going to actually station to go direct on June 3rd, and that's going to be activating the blood moon total lunar eclipse in Scorpio that we're going to be experiencing on May 15th. I'm going to be doing a whole video about that next week, and so if stick around to the end of this video if you want a brief overview of the energy of that blood moon, because I'll be discussing that there. Um, but this is going to be an activator of that eclipse energy and it's going to be quite intense because it's also going to be activating the ongoing saturn t-square with the lunar nodes that we've been experiencing since april and so um, that's the part where things are going to start to feel kind of sticky and maybe a little bit um, yeah, mentally, physically, and psychologically intense. Also, there's an energy of kind of stalling out. It's like we have all of this motivation and momentum, and we feel like we see where things could go while Mercury's retrograding in the sign of Gemini in particular and making that sextile to Jupiter. But as soon as Mercury goes into Taurus and really starts activating that eclipse point, that's where things start to stall out or we get to kind of um, see or understand on a on a cognitive level the hard reality, the hard truth of what it will entail to carry out these plans. And so um, that's going to be a big part of it. And it's really going to be activating that eclipse energy. So make sure you watch that video next week because that'll go into this in greater detail. Also, if you haven't already done so, I have a free video for you my karmic power of eclipses webinar um, it's a two-hour webinar that discusses the energy of the eclipses in the birth chart the north and south nodes in your birth chart eclipses by transit and how they activate your chart which is really important for understanding this eclipse season and all future eclipse seasons and the pre and postnatal eclipses all of it free for you my gift to help guide you through eclipse season again the link is down in the description below this will be available for a limited time throughout the entire eclipse season and so make sure Sure you jump on that um, and before we get into kind of the more extended general forecast for all 12 signs let me back up a little bit here <laughs> For those of you who are new to my channel, hello, my name is Heather Eland. I'm a professional astrologer and astrology teacher. I specialize in teaching students who are struggling to put all of the pieces together to learn to give meaningful, accurate astrology readings with confidence. The main way I do this is through my Cosmic Academy of Astrology, as well as some of my other courses. If you're interested in learning more about that, link is down in the description below. Um, but the way that I structure these videos is the way is that I always do a five to 10 minute general overview of the energy for the week ahead. Try not to skip this because this is gonna provide an important context for the more specific interpretation we'll be giving for all 12 signs. Speaking of which, when we do get into the forecast for all 12 signs, make sure you listen to your sun sign, your moon sign, and your rising sign to get a more holistic overview of the energy for the week ahead, or the next three weeks ahead for the entire Mercury retrograde. Um, your rising sign will be the most predominant energy, your sun sign will be secondary, and your moon sign is important to listen to as well, although this energy will be a little bit more internalized and subjective. Finally, at the end of each video, I do an overview of next week's video, which will be again on that blood moon total lunar eclipse in the sign of Scorpio, so stick around until the end if you're interested in that. And make sure you also hit that subscribe button. I do a new uh, video almost every single Saturday at 9 a.m. Mountain uh, Daylight Time. I do tutorials and forecasts, and so you don't want to miss that. And kind of getting back into um, the forecast here. So I'm going to go through kind of the details bit by bit. Um, we already talked about Mercury stationing to go retrograde. This is going to be on um, May 10th. It's going to be stationing between four and five degrees in the sign of Gemini. It's gonna be stationing in that sextile to um, Jupiter. And um, it's also going to be stationing 
um, in a square with the moon at the time too. So it's going to be maybe a little intense, but not, not so much. I mean, I think the initial onset of the Mercury retrograde is a nicer energy than some of the other stuff we're experiencing right now with the eclipses and Saturn squaring the nodes and all that. Um, but you know, it is a Mercury retrograde. So the typical Mercury retrograde advice still holds where even though you're you're going to be having some really good time to contemplate and to think and mull things over, you're going to have some really great ideas and inspirations, especially when Mercury goes Kazemi on um, the 21st of May, but you're also, you know, it's not a good time for externalizing these ideas, for sharing them with other people, um, double and triple check everything because there's more of an issue with rushing through things, making mistakes, especially during this Mercury retrograde because of that energy of Jupiter and Mars in that sextile. Um, we're gonna be kind of thinking and speaking and acting at a more rapid pace. We're gonna be really enthusiastic about things and it might be a Mercury retrograde where a lot of people jump the gun and launch into something because they don't know better, but you do. Um, and then when Mercury actually retrogrades into Taurus and hits that square with Saturn, and that um, activation of the eclipses, it's like, oh crap, I shouldn't have just you know, rushed into this. What was I thinking? What was I doing? Um, I need to kind of take a, a step or two backward. And um, also they might've created a mess. So it might be a situation where, you know, if you launch into something head first, all gung ho, before you really see the full reality of the situation and what it entails, which won't come until Mercury actually moves back into Taurus on the 22nd. Um, if you do that, then, you know, you might have this sort of like hard fall from cloud nine, this hard like reality that sets in where, you realize that you created something that you can't really undo quite so easily and it's going to be a little bit of work and a lot of extra burden because you rushed into it because you didn't think it through because you didn't realize the full spectrum the whole reality of the situation so just make sure that you really think about what it is that you want to create, why you're creating it, and realistically what's going on because there's something that you're probably not seeing just yet. So sit on it, right? Think about it. Um, the other thing too with that energy, of course, is with communication. Miscommunications are always common. It's going to be more common after Mercury goes into Taurus. And it could even be um, miscommunications where the blockages, and this is kind of the other side of things. You might have a communication that comes in or something like an email, a phone call, a letter even that sort of stops you in your tracks and is like, you know that thing that you wanted to do? Like you can't do it. Well, if you didn't already lunge into the thing, if you didn't already create the mess, <laughs> then um, when Mercury goes direct and leaves that placement, you probably will be able to think about or to understand ways to resolve it and it'll start to move forward in the next few weeks after, so after that June 3rd period when Mercury stations. So um, yeah, there's like, it's like, oh, you think maybe you can't do it and, or maybe there's something that comes up that causes you to feel afraid to do it. It could even just be a mental blockage of some kind, like you're not good enough, you don't have the resources, you know, um, all of these sort of negative feelings, a lack of confidence and once you are, once you see that and once you're able to kind of sit with it, you'll realize that maybe that's not the case and you'll figure out ways to overcome whatever obstacles you're experiencing in the moment at that start of June. And so this will be kind of contextual depending on, you know, your sign and how this is falling in your chart, which we'll get into in just a moment here. Um, but the final kind of thing I want to talk about is um, before Mercury actually stations to go direct and really activates that eclipse point really hard on the 3rd of June, um, it's going to be in trine with Pluto. So from the 22nd through, you know, the 3rd even, it's still really strong. Mercury is also in trine with Pluto, which does give us the gift of discernment. It's kind of like, all right, I see that this is really hard. Um, there's this obstacle that's come up. I have mental blockages. It could even be just that you're feeling really slow 
in your mental processes with Mercury in the very slow sign of Taurus that likes to really think things through. Um, and, you know, Saturn, which is restricting and limiting your ability to think about things from that broader perspective that you were able to at the start of the Mercury retrograde. Um, and so, but that, that, that Pluto energy brings a certain level of discernment that can be very useful moving forward. So it's kind of like, yeah, you see that this is hard or yeah, there's some blockage or yeah, there's something that you can't really wrap your head around just yet because your mental faculties are not quite online during this Mercury retrograde. Um, however, you can start to kind of discern the core issue at play that is preventing you from moving forward. And so that's going to be a part of this energy as well. And so I do like that Mercury when it's with Pluto, it's especially good in the earth signs at discerning really like physical, material, tangible issues that need to be brought up into the open so that way you can work with that energy instead of working against it. And so that's part of what you're going to be kind of dealing with during that, you know, tail end, that second part of the Mercury retrograde period. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's basically what's going on here. You'll have a lot more information about kind of the eclipse energy and how that's being activated next week. Um, but, you know, in the meantime, we're going to get really deep into this Mercury retrograde. And so I'm going to get into the forecast for all 12 signs, beginning of course with Aries and Aries rising. All right. And so for Aries and for Aries rising, the first part of this retrograde is going to actually bring a lot of clarity of thought. It's going to clear up or help to clear up um, some sort of miscommunication in your community in with your neighbors, your neighborhood, um, involving travel plans or something along those lines. There could also be miscommunication or issues that you might start to get in, insight into involving especially your siblings or extended family members. But this could also be you getting clarity of thought around um, a puzzling or troubling communication involving your partner, significant other, or any close one-on-one -on -one relationship in your life. This could also be you just getting clarity on an important relationship in some way or seeing from a bird's eye view, from a broader perspective where things might be heading. This could also be you getting really gung-ho and excited about an important contract, agreement, or negotiation. If that is the case, back it up a little bit, rein it in, especially if you're in Aries, sun, moon, or rising anywhere from zero to five degrees, you'll be feeling that sort of, um, enthusiasm a little bit more so and you're going to be more likely to jump the gun and you just want to make sure that you don't um, initiate things prematurely if you're a natal mercury retrograde person then that could be okay um, so you know that's kind of the exception to the rule especially if you're that Aries sun moon arising anywhere from zero to five degrees because that would be a really great time for you to initiate an important negotiation agreement contract that you want to be on the winning side of so long as it doesn't need to be mutually beneficial or there aren't more parties on your side of the um, of the spectrum there but um, basically this is going to be you um, getting it's almost as if a new insight or new information comes in through communication or connection with other people and it gets you really really lit up it could even be that you're excited about you know some travel plans or a new educational pursuit or maybe writing or teaching yourself but you kind of need to take some time to mull it over and to reflect and to really refine what it is that you're trying to accomplish especially the financial viability of what it is that you're trying to accomplish before moving forward mercury moves into the sign of taurus as we mentioned at the start of this video on May 22nd, where it starts to activate a square with Saturn and the T-square to the lunar nodes and also the eclipse, that blood moon eclipse in the sign of Scorpio. This is where things feel a little bit dicey. So whatever it is that was um, highlighted, illuminated, set in motion around the time of that eclipse, which um, you know you might not even fully understand it just yet. It starts to be made manifest around the time of this Mercury station to go direct on June 3rd. This is also a time where you could experience some sort of karmic, faded um, communication message. Um, it could even be like a letter that comes in the mail or something along those lines involving potentially your finances or a debt or, you know, some sort of inheritance or some sort of, um, 
some sort of investment or insurance poly policy or something along those lines. And for whatever reason, it causes a little bit of a hurdle to the next steps that you need to take moving forward in your relationship or with your educational pursuits or teaching pursuits or whatever it is that is coming up for you that we mentioned before at the start of the retrograde. Um, you know, just know that whatever is coming up, it's meant to come up for a reason to set you straight on the right path. There's something that you need to sort of let go of and move away from in order to move into the new direction that you need to move into um, with your finances, with your you know big sort of financial goals, with your material goals. Um, it could also be you know something involving a major purchase that it, it gets a little sticky around that time period. And so just kind of be aware and take your time and think things through, especially when it comes to any big financial decisions, because now is not the time to pull the trigger. There's something that's being eclipsed that you're not seeing, and there's something that you're not gonna be able to wrap your head around just yet. Um, the only exception to this would be maybe a financial opportunity that comes through like work or through a position, a pe somebody in a position of power and authority there might be more discernment there, but it's still not perfect. So you want to kind of, if you can, delay the um, delay setting something in motion or delay making a decision, um, especially when it comes to financial endeavors and especially after May 22nd. All right. And then for Taurus and for Taurus rising. So for Taurus, Mercury is stationing to go retrograde in your second house of finances. You could be revisiting an old financial opportunity or an old opportunity to make a really important major purchase of some kind. Um, and so this could actually be really exciting. You could have like some really good insight into how you could increase your wealth or um, you know use your finances or save your finances or invest your finances in a different way, especially during that first part of the Mercury retrograde that we talked about at the start of this video. Um, but as we move into the second part of the Mercury retrograde, it's gonna be coming into your sign and it's gonna be highlighting a major life transition that could already be set in motion, especially if you are a Taurus sun, moon, or rising around that 25th degree. So really anywhere from 20 to 30 degrees, you'll be feeling the intensity around this the most and Mercury is gonna cause you to have to really think about things. You might be feeling or not necessarily feeling, but you might, yeah, you might be feeling a little bit of extra anxiety due to fear that is coming from your thoughts, your negative self-talk, your um, mind is essentially your biggest barrier right now to achieving what you want to achieve, especially when it comes to your career and public standing, especially when it comes to the major life changes that you want to make, that you need to make right now. You're in a period of major transition, but there's a lot of burden, a lot of restriction, a lot of limitation that you've placed on yourself. This is a reap what you've sown energy, especially around work and especially around your connection connection or relationship to people in positions of power and authority or the way you view yourself as an authority figure or in a leadership role or the way that you view yourself maybe as not being able to be an authority figure or in a leadership role. Um, and so thinking about working through these mental blockages as Mercury stations to go direct around June 3rd, that's going to be the biggest hurdle to overcome and the biggest um, most fruitful work that you can be doing in order to unleash your potential because there's a lot of change you're going through in all areas of life. And of course, we'll talk about that a lot more as we get into the forecast for the blood moon next week. <laughs> All right, and for Gemini and for Gemini rising. So for Gemini, Mercury is going retrograde in your sign. And so especially if you're a Gemini sun, moon, or rising anywhere from um, zero to five degrees, you're gonna be feeling the more enthusiastic side of this. Your mind might be racing. You might have a lot of thoughts, a lot of ideas, a lot of inspiration coming through, especially coming through your connections and communications with other people, especially coming through your relationships and your friendships and your social networks and the people that you surround yourself with by choice. They could be a major source of motivation and inspiration, um, and they could be giving you a lot of really great ideas or even opportunities right now. And it could be flooding your mind like you're so excited about all the potential that you can't sleep at night, that you're tossing and turning, that you're just really amped up and lit up. And that could feel really good. 
However, make sure unless you're a Mercury retrograde native that you don't jump the gun because Mercury will be retrograding into your 12th house of endings and self undoing. And so there's something that you need to actually undo or let go of to unravel um, in order to make space to move forward with these new opportunities, these new ideas, these new potentials that are coming in for you right now. And so although it's an exciting time at the start of the Mercury retrograde, as soon as we hit May 22nd and Mercury goes back into Taurus, it's almost like something feels ominous, something feels off, something feels a lot more challenging than it did before. It could be that there's a past cycle, a past addiction, a past situation that's weighing on you and causing a lot of fear or causing a lot of pressure that you need to let go of. Also, this is a time where you might feel a little bit more anxious or on edge or frazzled, but you might not know exactly where it's coming from. It's almost like there's this free floating sense of anxiety or this ominous energy that you're picking up on. This is because you're feeling a little bit more sensitive mentally and also just intuitively and psychologically. You might have the weirdest, most um, just intense dreams, I would say, around this time period, May 22nd through June 3rd and a little bit onward, those dreams are trying to show you something. There's a karmic cycle that's come to its come to fruition and that's coming to an end. You need to move past something in order to move into something greater. And we'll talk about that a lot more as we get into the forecast for the blood moon next week. All right, and then for Cancer and for Cancer Rising. So for Cancer, this energy is happening in your 12th house at the beginning. So at the start of the Mercury retrograde from the 10th through the 22nd of May, you might be feeling a little bit more contemplative, introspective. You might be really enjoying your downtime, your alone time, your spiritual practices, writing, journaling, just sitting and thinking. Um, you know, this is a really a more internalized period where a lot can come through just taking time off to rest your mind, to contemplate, to do things creative with your sort of mental faculties. <laughs> and so like even doing visualizations, imagination exercises, you know, creative writing, journaling, things like that, that can unleash a lot of potential that can actually help you to carry forward um, a lot of new opportunities that will be coming to you over the next year with Jupiter and Aries transiting your 10th house of career. And so if you haven't already watched this video, make sure you do on the Jupiter and Aries transit that I did uh, for you guys last week, because that's gonna really, there's gonna be a lot of insight that you're gonna be gaining into what's gonna be growing for you over the next year of Jupiter transiting that sign. The second half of the Mercury retrograde, um, Mercury will be moving into Taurus, which is your 11th house, which is friends, group associations, people that you surround yourself with by choice. It could be that you have a mental blockage due to judgment or power and control issues or some sort of unexpected hurdle that comes to you through a faded situation, a karmic situation involving a friend or involving your social network. Um, it could also be that you need to break free from caring so much about what other people think about what it is that you're doing, and that could be the blockage that comes up for you. There could be a faded new connection or an old connection that comes in from the past or a connection that is somewhat new um, that just kind of takes on a new level of importance at this time. Tread lightly here because this could prove to be challenging for you financially or in the area of just kind of power and control dynamics within these friendships and that could become very apparent it's like you can't get clarity on what's going on with your friendships at the beginning of this or during this mercury retrograde but when mercury moves forward it's kind of like oh i see what's going on here or i understand why this relationship feels heavy and and unsettled at the same time, this connection, this friendship, this whatever it is, and I, I kind of know what I need to do moving forward. That being said, when it comes to like romantic partnerships and relationships, this could be a time where you are able to kind of revisit an old conversation, an old connection, and to see things much more clearly, to talk things out, so you can have a better um, a better chance at success moving forward. It's like kind of a restabilizing energy where you're having the heavy conversation conversations, but also it's very productive and you're getting a lot of good insight. Okay. For Leo and for Leo rising, 
So this Mercury retrograde begins in your 11th house, which is the house of friends, group associations, social, social networks, and people that you surround yourself with by choice. This could be a very social time. You might be flooded and inundated during around the time of Mercury stationing, especially. And while Mercury is retrograding in Gemini until May 22nd with emails, text messages, phone calls, you might have a lot of really great ideas. You might have travel plans coming up and opportunities to visit friends in foreign countries countries or at a distance even um, that could be really exciting and you know if you're a mercury retrograde native or if it's a short a shorter trip like during the beginning of the mercury retrograde that could go all right for you actually um, that being said mercury kind of moves backward into taurus on may 22nd and stations to go direct on june 3rd in the sign of taurus in a t-square with saturn this is going to be a major pivotal moment you're going to have to you're gonna be challenged and feel very pressured to make up your mind about a major life transition, a major decision, something that you need to change moving forward. And that could be um, quite hard on you because you're gonna be feeling very anxious, very frazzled. There's gonna be a lot of different opportunities, but it could also feel at the same time like you're stuck and you don't have um, as many options as you might want to. So it's kind of like you can see all the potentials, you can see all the options, but there's something, especially involving maybe a committed partnership, a contract, an agreement, an agreement, some sort of responsibility you've taken on for somebody else that's preventing you from actually going into making the changes that you need to make for yourself. And so that could be part of this too. Um, there's a lot of transition in all areas of life coming up for Leo. And of course, we'll talk about that when we get into the forecast for the blood moon in the sign of Scorpio, which is really what this Mercury retrograde is activating. Okay. And for Virgo and for Virgo rising... So for Virgo, Mercury is stationing to go retrograde in your 10th house, which is the house of career, public reputation, your legacy, um, your public image, and your relationship with people in positions of power and authority. It can also be your business or you as an authority. And so Mercury stationing there is going to cause you to kind of have to think about or rethink some things involving your career, involving your public reputation, or involving a partner's career or something along those lines as well. This could be where you can see the potential for a major investment or um, maybe funneling money into your business in some way, but it's not necessarily time to pull the trigger. Even if you are a Mercury retrograde native, um, especially if your sun, moon, or rising is between zero and five degrees, I would say, you know, hold off because Mercury is squaring your ascendant sun or moon. Um, but there's something here where you're, something's being brought to the forefront of your consciousness when it comes to a new either financial opportunity, work-related opportunity, or opportunity to connect with somebody who could further your financial goals in some way. Um, Mercury retrogrades to go into the sign of Taurus on May 22nd, and it stations to go retrograde there on June 3rd. This is a time period where Things are going to feel a little bit dicier, although for Virgos, this is not the worst energy. If you are a Virgo sun, moon, or rising anywhere from um, 25, let's say, yeah, 25 to 30 degrees, you're going to be feeling this in a very positive way. You're going to be feeling much more sharp in your mental faculties, even with that Saturn hurdle that's coming in there. there could, if there is a hurdle to your ability to be discerning, it's going to come through health or through um, your employees or relationship with coworkers or something along those lines, or just feeling burdened by your day-to-day -day work load or work experience. Um, that could cause some brain fog or some, some cloudiness because it's just like a, a burden on your mind however for the most part you're going to be feeling very empowered very discerning very sharp and your intuition is going to be much more on point um, again if you're not overdoing it in the area of work and those types of things and so this could actually be a really great time again for contemplation this is also where you're going to find um, very easily ways to unload burdens when it comes to your day-to-day -day routines, connections and work activities um, that are preventing you from aligning yourself truly with your integrity. And that's gonna be a very empowering experience. Um, 
this could also be something that uh, an important message that comes in that causes you to have to travel or change location or um, get some additional training or some additional schooling especially higher education or to connect with a teacher um, this could also potentially be you thinking about teaching something um, but it's almost as if you realize that you need to get this additional education in order to have less of a burden when it comes to your day-to-day -day work and so that way you could be maybe be higher up in the hierarchy so there's some career moves being made for Virgo all right and then for Libra and for Libra rising so for Libra this energy is happening with uh, Mercury stationing to go retrograde in your ninth house which is the house of foreign travel it's the house of higher viewpoints higher perspective it's higher perspectives it's the house of your philosophies your value systems that shape and frame your reality and so this is a time especially with that jupiter um, sextile that's going on here that you could actually have a communication especially maybe a one-on-one -on -one connection that comes in that changes your framework that changes your perspective that helps you to view things from um, a higher philosophy or that helps you to align yourself or your relationships much more greatly with your integrity with your values this could also be a communication that comes in or that you're revisiting with somebody um, especially maybe a romantic relationship or a romantic connection that you're revisiting with somebody in a foreign country and that could actually be quite fruitful for you and really positive it could help either um, rehash some things if that's what needs to happen or it could help you to kind of finally um, talk it out and shift the perspective in the relationship so you can move on once and for all once Mercury goes direct. Um, Mercury is retrograding into your eighth house and that's where there's going to be some stickiness. There could be some challenges and some major transitionary moments that come up for you, um, not just in May, but even in June, especially when Mercury stations to go direct on June 3rd, involving um, joint finances, in, involving debt, involving taxes, involving inheritance, involving other people's resources or resources that other people take from you. And so um, this is something to just be very much aware of. It could even be something like an investment that you made kind of goes south or goes sour and that could be weighing on you where you don't feel as excited or creative or passionate or joyful because you have all this... Um, kind of energy around having to pivot financially or a lack of clarity or a lot of maybe anxiety or fear um, financially. If that's the case, just know that this is something that will move on. It's kind of like you're sitting in it and there's mental blockages more so than anything else to you actually making progress and doing what you need to do to resolve this issue. And so working through fear, past anxiety, past trauma around material wealth, possessions, finances, things like that, that can be very fruitful for you. This is also a time where you can go through a really powerful psychological healing, um, especially when it comes to family trauma, um, your early childhood traumas and situations, anything that's causing fear that is kind of dictating what you do, that's holding power over you in the moment that's not related to what's going on in the here and now. And so you could go through a major psychological or emotional healing. This would be actually a really great time to seek out counseling with that Pluto, um, Pluto energy and trying to Mercury especially and that could actually take things to another level for you um, and so that's what's going on for Libra for Scorpio and for Scorpio rising so for Scorpio, this energy of Mercury is stationing in your eighth house, which is the house of um, debt, joint finances, other people's money, fear, psychological issues, death, rebirth, transformation, the occult, magic, all these things, right? And so this could be a lot of what's coming up for you right now. You might have some of these topics on your mind. Maybe you're revisiting some studies in the occult sciences, astrology included. Maybe you are um, thinking a lot about, you know, your own mortality or rewriting your will or getting out an insurance policy for, you know, life insurance or just an insurance policy in general. Maybe you have to revise or change something involving insurance or your inheritance or your will or something along those lines. Um, if that's the case, this is actually a good time to actually move forward with that. 
It could also be you doing a lot of rethinking when it comes to your financial situation and the way that you um, kind of deal with your finances or the way that you deal with your finances with other people or with your business or with your employees or the way you pay your employees and compensate them. That could be something that could be on your mind as well. You might wanna be more generous um, and you might wanna jump the gun and go in and do that, but there's something that you're not seeing yet in terms of like the contract or agreement portion of that that you might want to sit with first um, before you jump right in. Um, yeah, but for the most part, I don't I don't see like a huge issue at the start of the Mercury retrograde. It could be that maybe an old bill comes up, but the money comes in through your work or through some other means to pay it. Um, it could be that there is some sort of uh, mental or emotional healing that results in physical healing that comes up around that time that you have to revisit. But when Mercury retrogrades into your seventh house and activates the uh, Saturn T-square to the nodes and the blood moon in Scorpio that we're going to be talking about, in the next forecast, um, this is where things get a little dicey. There's a major change or a major transition that you might want to make or feel like you have to make um, in all areas of life, but especially involving your relationships, your home, your property, your real estate, your family, um, or you know, just kind of on a personal level, a professional level. There's a lot of changes here, and there's something that's going to come up for you in terms of a message or a thought or a communication that's going to cause you to feel a lot of fear around it, a lot of pressure, and to stall out that's okay you might need to stall out because you might be going too fast um, or it could be coming up so that way you can overcome the mental blockages especially that are preventing you from moving forward into the path that you need to move into especially in partnership with somebody all right and then for sagittarius and sagittarius rising Mercury is stationing to go retrograde in your seventh house, which is the house of relationships. And so this is actually a really nice time at the beginning for revisiting an important conversation in relationship with somebody else. This could be you renegotiating a contract, an agreement, something along those lines, like sh hashing out the terms in some way, and that could go quite nicely or be quite positive for you. Um, but yeah, for the most part, and it could be like a financial agreement or something along those lines potentially that comes up a little bit later in the Mercury retrograde. But I would say for the most part, um, this is a really great time for romance, for connection with your partner, for sharing ideas, for sharing your passions, your dreams, the things that bring you joy, uh, or kind of revisiting those things together in partnership. When Mercury moves back into the sixth house in, and when it moves into Taurus for you, this could be an old health issue that comes back around that causes a lot of strain on you mentally or causes some sort of fear or anxiety or blockage to moving forward with your plans that you want to move forward with, especially work-related plans. Um, that could be a big part too. There's something that you need to change or revisit or revise involving your work, involving your health, involving your day-to-day -day routines, involving your employees or the people that you work with. Um, there's something here that's weighing on you and there could be a heavy communication that needs to be addressed but shouldn't be addressed until Mercury goes direct. Um, so it's kind of a time of contemplating and sitting on it, as, even if it comes in and the moment and it feels really frazzling like you have to deal with it now you might not have to deal with it now so ask yourself do i actually need to talk to this person to address this to deal with it right now in this moment or can i put it off and sit with it because your brain is not going to be fully online um when it comes to any of these issues or any issues at all right now um, during that second, second half of the retrograde. You're also going to be going through a lot of transition because of that blood moon eclipse and its activation, which we'll talk about um, when we get into the next week's video. For Capricorn and for Capricorn rising. So for Capricorn, uh, this Mercury retrograde is happening in your sixth house. There could be an important insight or something that you have to revisit involving your health, your work or your daily routines. It could be impacting your work life balance in some way and you could feel very optimistic or excited about it. Maybe you wanna create a home office or redecorate or renovate your home office. That could be really exciting and actually really positive for you to do. Um, there's something here, an idea that you're really sitting with and that you're um, going to be mulling over and kind of internalizing for the first part of the Mercury retrograde from May 10th through the 22nd that could really improve your life um, in terms of what you're doing out there in the world, work, work or otherwise. 
as well as your home life. And so again, that work-life balance, it looks like, could play a big role in this first part of the Mercury retrograde. Mercury retrogrades back into the fifth house, which for Capricorns is not the worst thing. However, um, you're going to be revisiting something like an old hobby, an old interest, an old passion, something that really lights you up that... Um, you might feel some sense of a mental burden around or mental exhaustion around when it comes to figuring out the financial aspect of things. There could also be a communication that comes in involving your children that causes you to have to pivot or hesitate or change something or put your own passions and plans on hold because there is something financially that needs to be dealt with. If that's the case, it's okay, um, especially if you don't have to address it right immediately in the moment. You're gonna be able to see it quite clearly, especially if you're a Capricorn, 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 sun, moon, or rising. <laughs> if you're a Capricorn, sun, moon, or rising, anywhere from um, 28 or 25 to 30 degrees in the sign of Capricorn, you're going to be experiencing more of that grand train energy. You're going to be very discerning, but um, it's always advisable to kind of sit, to hesitate, to wait before moving forward, especially if there's a financial decision involved because Saturn is in your second house telling you to be patient, take your time, to move slowly. All right, and then Aquarius and Aquarius rising. So for Aquarius, Mercury is stationing to go retrograde in your fifth house, which is the house of joy and passion and fun and play. And um, yeah, for the most part, the first part of the retrograde from May 10th through the tw uh, 22nd is gonna be experienced very positively for you. You're gonna have a lot of really creative ideas. You're gonna have better connections, more playful connections with your children if you have any. You're gonna have more playful romantic connections. Um, this is a time where you could have a lot of ideas involving ways to take your passions and to use them to create something. And so I love this energy at the beginning. Mercury retrogrades though to go into your fourth house of home, family, property, real estate, ancestry, um, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> And um, this is going to be highlighting a major life transition, a major change that you're needing to make in one way or another. Um, it's going to be a time to revisit, maybe plans to change or shift something involving your home or property, maybe to make a move. It's not the time to initiate though. There's some sort of hesitation, mental blockage, fear, or actual physical limitation that's telling you to wait, that's preventing you from jumping all in and actually moving forward with it. Just know that things will shift and you're going to have to make some major changes involving your work, your career, your home, your property, your personal life, your uh, relationships. But, um, you know, while Mercury's in retrograde, it's maybe not the best time to know what you need to do and when you need to do it. It's not maybe the best timing to move forward. If you jump into making a move especially or doing something really important involving your property, your home, or your family, um, you're likely to create a mess that you're gonna have to revisit and it's gonna be a little bit harder to actually get things going moving forward. So just kind of be aware, sit with it. Um, things will start to loosen up and open up when Mercury goes direct. And so um, if you're having a mental blockage and you're not really able to figure things out during the retrograde, don't worry so much. Just take your time and be patient because that's what Saturn wants. <laughs> And then finally for Pisces and for Pisces rising. So for Pisces, this Mercury retrograde is starting and stationing in your fourth house of home, family, property, and real estate. Um, this energy is going to cause you to have some really big ideas, some important communications that could even come in involving your family, um, involving your family relationships. And so that could improve something. It could be an important idea or an important communication that you sit with or revisit involving your parents or your family members. But it could also be, um, you know, an idea that could improve your wealth or your resources around the material ownership of your home or um, around property ownership in general. And so that could be something to kind of think about. So if you're thinking about a renovation or if you're thinking about buying a property, if you're thinking about a move, um, this could, or a way to maybe raise funds or to earn money for something along those lines, this could be a time where those ideas could become fruitful when Mercury goes direct, of course. 
Um, Mercury retrogrades into the sign of Taurus, which is your third house. And this is actually not as bad for Pisces as it will be for some of the other signs. Um, and so, especially if you're a Pisces sun, moon, or rising, anywhere from 25 to 30 degrees, you're going to have some really intense um, conversations and communications in a positive way where you're going to be getting into the deep stuff. You're not going to be wanting to have surface level, um, you know, niceties and, um, and small talk during this time. You're going to want to get in there and get deep. And this is a time where you could revisit old connections, old communications, old friendships, old relationships with people in your community, even that have that depth, that have that um, intensity, that have that layer of trust and trustworthiness and stability that you're looking for in your friendships. Um, that being said, there is some weirdness or intensity going on here, potentially involving travel plans, higher education, your mindset, especially around certain things. This is where your negative self-talk, it's going to feel like it's coming from somewhere else. Like it's coming from somewhere deep in your subconscious. It's coming from maybe a past cycle or a past lifetime. Um, but it's going to feel like there's some sort of anxiety or some sort of ominous energy or some sort of just negativity that you can't quite pin down and it's preventing you from like thinking in an optimistic fashion, speaking in an optimistic fashion, moving forward with plans for travel or something along those lines too. Um, if that's the case, just sit with it. It's something to pay attention to. It's something to sort, sort out and sort through, but it's not something that you're going to overcome or work through overnight. This is where you're going to have to take your time and to be much more deliberate with your thoughts and with your speech, and especially again with your self-talk and the way that you think and speak about yourself. Think about yourself positively. Speak about yourself positively, um, that type of thing, right? And you're going to have to be very careful and clear about that. You're going to have to think about it um, and be deliberate with it because it's not going to come as naturally to you during this time period. It could even potentially be that there's somebody who is kind of working against you or um, a hidden enemy of some kind who is speaking badly about you and that could cause some sort of hurdle or some sort of difficulty for you, um, you know, especially on that mental plane. But don't believe what they're saying. <laughs> don't internalize it. Um, the Mercury retrograde will make it more likely for you to internalize it, but just know that there's a way to work things out and to kind of talk things through, especially when Mercury goes direct. And so that's what's going on for Pisces. And kind of moving on to um, the blood moon <laughs> total lunar eclipse that's going to be happening in the sign of Scorpio on May 15th, which we're going to be talking about in next week's forecast. This is a huge energy. Um, this is going to be actually visible in parts of North America. So, and also like South America, like all of South America and a little bit of Europe. So if you're in those areas, um, you know, it's going to be impacting you a little bit more and you might be able to see it too, which is kind of cool. Um, although, you know, it's typically considered to be bad luck to view an eclipse. Um, I still like to view them. So. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is going to be a um, blood moon a lunar eclipse in Scorpio in a T-square with Saturn. This has been an ongoing energy with the Saturn T-square to the North and South node since April. This is a very heavy karmic energy that's influencing us, influencing us in some way that's causing us to have to um, take responsibility for what we've created in terms of our karma in this lifetime. It's a reef what we've sown sort of energy. And we're going to have to work on and work through releasing and rebuilding something in order to launch into the new path that we actually need to move forward forward into. And so it's kind of going to be a slower process than it otherwise would be with that North Node in Taurus, which is a fixed Earth sign. And in that square with Saturn, we are, we're going to have to be much more deliberate. We're going to have to take more time. And while eclipses normally bring rapid growth and like rapid change and everything's happening all at once, it could feel like everything's trying to happen all at once, but you can't quite make it so. And that's going to be usually because of your own mental blockages and because of what you created prior to this eclipse season that's being illuminated, highlighted, and brought into the 
open. And so we'll talk about this a lot more in detail next week. In the meantime, make sure you head on over to the link down in the description below for immediate access to my Karmic Power of Eclipses webinar so you can learn a lot more about eclipses, not just in the houses, but conjunct your planets, your pre and postnatal eclipse, eclipses in the birth chart, all of it. My free gift to you to help you navigate this eclipse season. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, please like the video, subscribe to my channel, and share this with your friends if you feel like they could benefit from the information that I shared with you today. I'll see you in the next one. Bye everyone.